Hi guys, we're back with our book today, and it's a new one. It's really good. Well, we haven't read it. Well, I've read parts of it. Um, while I was substituting, I saw this book in a really big size in the teacher's planning and break room, and I wrote it down, and I instantly went home and looked for it on Amazon, because this is, wait a second, Ruth Heller wrote it, and Google her, she is one cool um, writer and illustrator. And Google Uncle Davy Krista. Yeah, we've talked about him before, but I want to get back to this. Um, no... I'm not dismissing my amazing brother, but this woman is really cool, and I'd never heard of her before. It says, Explore Language. This is a book about adjectives, and guess what? Adjectives are, like, one of my favorite parts of speech, for real. Um, as an English major and as someone who really loves to talk and describe things, this is called Many Luscious lollipops so without further ado let's turn our camera happy friday by the way we are having a killer night reading books all right check out that picture so the woman who wrote this also illustrated it do you, do you hear what i'm saying <laughs> the woman who wrote it illustrated it too okay Gum drops, yeah. Jelly beans. Lollipops, baby. An adjective's terrific when you want to be specific. It easily identifies by number, color, or by size. Twelve large blue gorgeous butterflies. It describes all the things with style and grace. And also, it describes a place. Mysterious, star-spangled, asteroidal, outer space. Isn't that a gorgeous illustration? This woman is awesome. Or any special member of our precious human race. A weary, wounded, bearded, and bandaged tennis ace. Oh, he hurt his knee, too. Just like mine. An adjective describes a thought, idea, or emotion. Peaceful coexistence, a universal notion. That's a lion and that's a sheep. A that's lamb. Lion. It's a lamb. And they're peacefully coexisting. An adjective's terrific, even when it's not specific. Some jelly beans, a few gumdrops, and many luscious lollipops. It never fails to add details to what you write or say. A mesmerizing, colorful, and glittering display. That's a pretty Christmas tree. Yeah. Use as many as you wish before, but after you need Why two so, or more. Okay. A wet and soggy, drizzly day, rainy, wintry, and gray. I think it's kind of like cars, how with cars there's so many silver and black and white cars and only a few colorful cars. And it's perfectly okay if you arrange your words this way. Roses are red, violets are blue. They're predicate adjectives if you do. And if you ask a question, too, was this puzzle hard to do? Yeah, it's two pieces right next to each other. Dem demonstratives will help you choose. This way, you win. That way, you lose. Okay, moving right along. Too 
I like these socks, but not those shoes. Possessives always tell you whose our circus acts are front page news. The clown's red nose, the elephant's pose, the bareback rider's twinkle toes, her horse, of course, its prancing gait, and the daring young man with his trapeze mate. Can you get that page? I'm still scared of that. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> Three adjectives used frequently are articles a and an and the. As anyone can plainly see, there's a fern and an urn on the balcony. Mm. This is called a fern, this type of plant. And this is called an urn. And this is a balcony. Treat proper adjectives the same as any other proper name. A Persian rug, an Irish setter. They always begin with a capital letter. Proper nouns. It's a Persian rug and an Irish setter. That's the breed of dog. Look at her. If you wish to create an adjective, add ibel, abel, or us, or I've or any other suffix seen describing this famous, remarkable queen with her doll-like face and golden crown and jeweled, irresistible Renaissance gown. It's a beautiful, regal, expensive dress for the this popular monarch called Queen, oh, sorry, Good Queen Bess. She has lovely, satiny, flawless pearls and gleaming gems in her reddish curls. Where's her makeup? I don't know. Where's her eyebrows? Some adjectives compare. That's like my hair. Curly, curlier, curliest hair. Fairest, fairer, fair. For comparatives, just add an er. For superlatives, an est, except. For the few irregular ones like good and better and best. I'm ready to eat this one because that's the Uh huh. See the back of this book for the rest. Use comparatives to compare just two and superlatives for more. The taller animals of these two is the tallest one of four. At times you must use more and most, at times you less and least, astonishing beast, more astonishing beast, the most astonishing beast, fattening feast, less fattening feast, and the last is the least, the least fattening feast. Yeah. Is it most or more or least or less? How do you relieve this alarming distress? It isn't amusing. It's very confusing. Which one of these words should you really be using? Or should you just add an er or an s? No one has yet found an infallible test. But er and s are usually best with words that have one syllable and also two if they end in y after you change the y to i three syllable words and words with more use less and least and most and more here are some that work both ways either is correct able angry clever friendly gentle handsome narrow obscure polite quiet secure simple stupid here are irregular ones I told you to expect. Bad, ill, little, many, some, much, well, far, worse, worst, less, more, 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 better, farther, worst, worst, least, most, 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 best, farthest. Whenever you find yourself in doubt, be cautious and be wary. It's often very helpful to consult your dictionary. 
the end. Wow, that was quite a tongue twister. It's almost like reading a Dr. Seuss book, but it was super informative, and I'm so glad we scored this book. Yeah, oh, yeah. Everyone have a good night. Happy Friday.